Well, it takes perseverance and faith to achieve a dream. And our guest this evening is an astronaut whose inspiring life story is featured in a new movie. Jose Hernandez is a former NASA flight engineer and became the first migrant farm worker to travel to outer space. He's the subject of a new film based on his life called A Million Miles Away. It follows him and his devoted family on a decades-long journey from a rural village in Mexico to the fields of California to more than 200 miles above the Earth in the International Space Station. That film is called A Million Miles Away. It premieres tomorrow on Amazon Prime. We are joined by the subject of the film, Jose Hernandez. Welcome to the Busted Halo Show. Thank you very much, Father Dave. Happy to be here. It's great to have you. What an inspiring story. Michael Pena, a lot of people would know him. He plays you, the adult version of you, in, in the film that premieres tomorrow. Really very moving. I had a chance. They sent me a screener, so I got to watch the movie. What an inspiring story. So, I mean, it was your life, so pretty inspired to you. But, uh, <laughs> but it, it's amazing to go from, as depicted in the film, you as a young boy watching one of the earliest uh, mission launches to the moon with what NASA was doing on black and white TV. TV, and then there you are, cut to more than 30 years later, and you yourself are in space. That's correct. Uh, you know, it's the uh, ultimate American dream. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, it's uh, amazing what um, education can do, because I think that's the great equalizer that uh, allows us to pursue our dreams here in this great country of ours. So you, you are uh, you made history. You're the first migrant farm worker to go into outer space. Your family's from Mexico. You're living and working in, in California. Uh, and the film depicts that. What was it like for you uh, as a, as a young boy? We see part of it in the film, but obviously you had these aspirations to go to space. But I would imagine there would be part of it, even with that sort of youthful optimism that a child would have. There might be that feeling of, wow, I'll never break out of this system that I'm in. Well, uh, thanks to my father, when uh, the dream was conceived of me wanting to be an astronaut after seeing the very last Apollo mission, Apollo 17, uh, my father had the wisdom, even though he only has a third grade elementary school education and is a uh, migrant farm worker, he wow. had the wisdom to sit me down and give me a simple five ingredient recipe it was very simple father dave he said he said uh determine your purpose in life recognize how far you are and number three draw yourself a roadmap number four uh, prepare yourself according to the challenge you selected and number five develop a work ethic second to none and then of course i add the sixth one father dave which is perseverance never giving up well you certainly had to. I mean, I would think a, a lot of people, after being rejected so many times, might just give up. In fact, there's a scene in the film where you're, uh, after you've been, they let you in, but then it's hard. You know, they, they, they describe the fact that just because you're here in Houston doesn't mean you're going to go in outer space. It's a whole tough training program and all that. And, th and they were putting you through the putting you through the ringer. And the, sh the film shows you asking one of the more experienced astronauts, and you say, is it worth it? And by that, you mean like all this that I'm going through and they're kind of treating me as the rookie and maybe even <laughs> treating you worse in many other ways. But uh, she kind of looks at you and she says, oh, yeah, it's worth it. Would you agree? Was it worth it? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll say it the same way Casey said it to me. Oh, well, yeah, it was <laughs> worth it because you're up there, uh, Father Dave, and uh you're going around the world once every 90 minutes. Those 14 days I was up there, I went around the world 217 times. And, you know, you've got one window to the beauty of our earth and you got the opposite window, window to our universe. And you wow. see how perfect, how magical it is. And that's one of the things I always say. People say, um, how can science and religion coexist? Because I'm very religious. And, uh, and and they asked me, how can they coexist? And I say, it's very easy because um, science tells you how things happen, the rules of engagement, and, mm -hmm. uh, and religion tells you why they happen. Yeah. And so this is why they could coexist together. And this is why I could coexist as a Catholic uh, scientist. 
Well, and you and you described the fact that you took along with you to space your scapular, your rosary, yeah. your St. Christopher medal. In the film, there's a very moving scene where I think playing your cousin, obviously we know some of the stuff they have to make you know, dramatic and whatnot, but he's somewhat reluctantly gives you a, a medal, uh, an inspiring medal that you take with you on your uh, space travel. St. Christopher. Uh -huh. Saint Christopher yes, medal. it gives me a St. Christopher and because uh, it means a lot to him. Yeah. But he probably knew I needed it more than he did where I was going. And he said, take this, which meant a lot. P particularly, you know, a patron saint of travel. Uh... <laughs> exactly. Very, very appropriate, wouldn't you say? For sure. You mentioned the um, in these in these times in our modern world, there seems to be a dichotomy in our culture between people of faith and people who might believe in science and the church. <laughs> the church was probably the, the biggest proponent of scientific research back in the day, if we go back centuries. So, so it's odd probably right. for someone who understands the history of the Catholic church to see what's going on now. But I would imagine in a different, in addition to the other hurdles you must have experienced at NASA, you being a, the only migrant farm worker and not a lot of other people of color and all that. But I would think that that was even a piece of it too, somebody who's a, a religious person. Yes, I think it helped me keep the faith. It helped me keep the faith in humanity, in the fact that uh, people would do the right thing um, in the long run. And, you know, and I think my mom helped me a lot in that, uh, Father Dave. Um, I remember the first time I felt discrimination at school. I came oh. home and complained to my mom. I was probably eight, nine years old, and I complained to my mom. And uh, she looked at me and she said, son, you just have to kill him with love. Mm. And I said, what do you mean kill him with love? And she said, show him who you are here, pointing, pointing to my heart. Show them who you are here. And sooner or later, they're going to see what good person you are and you'll win them over. Now, there's always going to be a few that you're never going to win over, but those are the people you stay away from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, our guest this evening on the Busted Halo Show is Jose Hernandez. A new film about his life and him being the first migrant worker, migrant farm worker to travel to space premieres tomorrow on Amazon Prime. It's called A Million Miles Away. It's not literally, does it feel like you're so far? When you're up in the International Space Station, do you just feel like, ooh, it's almost like I could touch the Earth, but also so, so far from it? It, it, it seems far away because you're so high up. But, uh, you know, the million miles away sort of uh, refers to that you go around the world once every 90 minutes. So in actuality, you traveled over those 14 days, 5.4 million miles. So I wish we had a frequent flyer program with an airline because <laughs> I would be still pretty good. Well, uh, we might have to go to space to get anywhere on Delta these days. <laughs> we were all lamenting that last night. <laughs> so you were there for you were there for two weeks uh, in the International Space Station. But I would imagine from even from the time that you were accepted into the program to then, it's not just like you know they put you through a couple of weeks training and make you watch a Zoom video and then you're all good. I would imagine it takes a lot to get there. Even after you get that acceptance letter, which is a very moving part of the movie, how many times you're rejected and how much you persevere. Yes, because it was uh, 32 years uh, to the date of when uh, the dream was conceived that I want to be an astronaut. I was 10 years old. I was wow. 42 when I got accepted. And uh, it was 37 years uh, when I finally realized the dream of going up into space yeah. uh, because I was seven. You were 47? Yes, sir. Uh, now, I would imagine that, you know, with all you have to do, you have to be physically fit, you have to go through uh, rigorous training and all that. Many of the people would probably be younger than 47, I would guess, who go to space. Yes, I think the average age was about 36 or so, because uh, uh, it's got to be balanced with experience. And, of course, as you mentioned, youth. And because it took me so long to get selected, I was kind of like at the, I could see the window of opportunity for me to get selected uh, closing. 
even though uh, NASA doesn't, even though NASA doesn't have a minimum age to select an astronaut, yeah. you kind of look at the statistics and you say, okay, the average is about 35. It's kind of rare if you're 30 and get selected. And it's kind of rare if you're like 41, 42 to get selected. So I knew I was in my last uh, opportunities uh, to get selected. Yeah. And I, I finally, I, you know, I squeezed right in. <laughs> Well, the movie premieres tomorrow. It's called A Million Miles Away, and it stars Michael Pena. People would know him from films like Oliver Stone's World Trade Center, Shooter with Mark Wahlberg, uh, Observe the Martian. The Port. Martian, yeah, I was in the Martian. So what's it like? I mean, obviously you get a call at some point, and they're like, we want to make a movie about your life. And then you would uh, be involved. Obviously you're involved in now the promotion of it and all that. But even just kind of seeing a film come together, is it a little surreal? It is a little surreal. Uh, thank goodness I had uh, taken the time to write my uh, biography, a self-penned biography, uh, Reaching for the Stars. And they sort of used that as a framework. And then uh, I interviewed, you know, it was three different screenwriters, uh, that script writers that I, uh, that I worked with because they would call me, interview me, interview my family. The last one being the director, Alejandra Marquez Abella. And she, I invited her to, hey, come to my house, get to know my family, my wife, my kids, my parents, my brothers and everything. And so she came, spent a few days with us and uh, and uh, she, uh, you know, got the script very, very close. Uh, and uh, we were very happy with how our our story is being portrayed on the screen. Well, and I would imagine also that there's uh, th there's kind of an element of, if you will, uh, uh, want, wanting the word, like we would say in the Catholic Church, kind of evangelization, wanting to spread the word, because you there you were, a little kid, and you're like, I have a dream of going to space. And I would imagine that a lot of kids like, you know, see astronauts and go, that'd be cool, I'd like to do that. But it's, it's more than just... Um, uh, you know, going through school and getting a degree and all that. There, it really does take so much of what we would call in the Catholic Church the cardinal virtues of really perseverance, of having faith in believing in something beyond myself, but also very much believing in myself. And that's right. But you yeah. also you also get help along the way, uh, Father Dave. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you know, there's um, you know, that teacher that came to my house when I was in the second grade and pleaded with my parents that we needed to stay in one place and stop living that nomadic migrant farm working yeah. lifestyle yeah. that we made Nor Northern California, our home Stockton. Uh, you know, it's that uh, my wife, when I got rejected for the sixth time and I'm ready to throw in the towel, you know, props me up and saying that she believes in me, but then asking that, simple yet profound question what do the folks that got selected have that you don't yeah and uh and i didn't know the answer father david i said maybe i better find out and that's when i knew and found out i had to become a pilot i had to get scuba certified i had to uh be a elite athlete and and i had to uh learn a third language, which I took an opportunity by accepting a job that took me to Russia a lot. Well, and there's a scene where the, the character plays your cousin. I mean, I think it's, it's a very um, poignant moment, particularly in our world today, where we still see a lot of discrimination and a lot of racism. And we're talking about, because we see scenes like where they, you show up at NASA and they think you're the janitor and they give you keys and say, change the toilet paper. But there's a scene where your cousin says, who better to go into a foreign, uncharted place like outer space than a migrant farm worker? So true, isn't it? So yeah. powerful statement because, uh, you know, that's what a lot of our fellow farm workers do. And uh, a lot of times they sacrifice themselves. That generation is sacrificed so that their kids can have an opportunity to go even further. You know, Alejandra Marcos Abella uses the monarch butterfly a as an example of really what migrant farm workers do, which is, you know, each generation, you know, they sacrifice themselves so that they can go a little further and a little mm. further. 
And that's what my parents did, which is why I felt so compelled that I needed to go to college because I saw with my eyes, you know, they're sacrificing yeah. themselves. And 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 the only way I could repay them is to do what they wanted me to do, which is go to college and move the whole family a bit further in the social economic uh, ladder. Well, and also you've certainly described yourself as a, a, a person of faith from growing up and raising your family and all that. I would imagine it's something of a spiritual experience to be hovering above the earth <laughs> and looking down on all of humanity. They even talk out, outside of the realm of religion. They talk about that some astronauts have had what they call like an overview effect, meaning like seeing the world in the big picture and maybe some of these, when we get back onto earth and all the things that divide us and the boundaries and, and walls that we put up um, between ourselves, literal and figurative, that tend to matter less. Did you or you or some of your fellow astronauts experience anything like that? Uh, yeah, you you do experience things like that. I mean, there's even books uh, with that title, uh, Father Dave, that 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 uh, astronauts have written. But in my particular case, uh, you know, I, you know, you have two windows. You have the window where you look down right. on Earth and the beauty of our Earth, and then you go the opposite way to the other window, and you see the window to our universe, mm -hmm. and you look at the perfection of our universe and our planet and our sun. And you say, man, this is just too perfect to be a coincidence. Yeah, It's just too perfect. There has to be something else out there that perhaps we don't understand, but we appreciate. And I think yeah. that's where the religion comes in. Well, and also it reminds me a bit of Pope Francis, who uh, his latest encyclical, and he's about to come out with a, a, a sequel to it in a couple of days. He call he calls this big blue marble floating in space. He calls it our common home, and keeps reminding us that we must care for our common home, but not just in the way we might think about, you know, saving electricity or uh, the fossil fuels or all that, but really an integral ecology that talks about people and the the people on our planet who suffer the most from some of our uh, climate issues and, and other ways in which we don't care for the home tend to be the poor. So Pope Francis really kind of giving, trying to give us, a lot of us, this kind of bird's eye view that you literally had <laughs> looking down at our common home that we must care for. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, one of the uh, things that I walked away when you say, you know, the take home as opposed, you know, apart from taking care of environment, uh, was was when I first unbuckled my seatbelt and started floating, which is a oh. weird sensation because yeah. you're you feel like uh, you're breaking the laws of gravity, as right. we know down here on Earth, and you feel like a superhero, Father David, and, you know, and then you so you push yourself, uh, and and you make your best Superman impersonation to go to the window to see the earth for the first time wow. from a position very few hum humans have had the privilege to do We're from the outside. And here we are flying over North America and you see Canada, US and Mexico. And what struck me as so beautiful was you couldn't tell where one country ended and the other began. And I said, my God, I had to go out of this world to realize that down there we're just one yeah. that borders are human made concepts designed to separate us and how sad because we're just one down yeah. there yeah and and you of all people who absolutely experienced <laughs> borders and what that means for us and your family the first migrant farm worker ever to travel to space, Jose Hernandez, is the subject of a new film that premieres tomorrow on Amazon Prime. It's called A Million Miles Away, starring Michael Pena. I love the image of whoever the little boy who plays you as a young kid when he's playing with the little corn cob. Like corn, it's a little corn hub. Yeah, yeah. That's great, isn't it? What a what an amazingly powerful visual image. <laughs> That's it puts great. it all together. Thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you, Father David. Thank you very much. And, uh, you know, uh, God bless everyone who's uh, listening to us and perhaps even watching us. Sure. And uh, so happy to be here.
Well, and, that, and tomorrow, so it premieres on Amazon Prime, so people can watch it everywhere. They don't have to go out. Absolutely, the they can watch it everywhere, you, and you, you know, go somewhere. Log what's on, your, and what's that? What's your premiere party? Do you get to go watch it like up in the International Space Station? Let's go watch. No, I'm I'm it. here in Houston, but the, our premiere party is going to be at at uh, Space Center Houston. Whoa. So we're going to oh, see awesome. us there. Uh, there's going to be the the NASA Johnson Space Center director there, several astronauts. I think there's even a message from Frank Rubio, who spent over a year in the International Space wow. Station, still up there. He's going to beam down a message to us, to myself, uh, congratulating us for the uh, for the film. And uh, and because it's the first day of Hispanic Heritage Month. So so we're going to be celebrating. And I'm so happy to be here to be able to celebrate. Uh, Houston, we have a premiere. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Absolutely. Jose Hernandez, Jose, thank you for your time that you spent with us, but also for bringing your story first to the pages and now to the screen. It's uh, very important for more of us to be able to have that bird's eye view and realize how much in common we have. So thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You.